Hello my friends. Well this is a pretty interesting topic that's dropping into me this afternoon. I thought I'd talk to you about possession and ask a little question. Have you ever met anybody that has been possessed? I have. I've met many actually. <laughs> it seems to go with this line of business but um, have you? Or would you recognize somebody that was possessed if you met them? Maybe you wouldn't. I mean, I didn't immediately recognize that the, pos the person was possessed until those demons or entities manifested. But today, um, I'm going to stretch this little fractal into a few different things using etymology and talk about possession not just in the spirit realm, but in the material realm, because it's the same word, right? That's what was dropping into me. Possessions, why do we call it the same thing? Why is it given the same word? So if somebody has an entity or a demon within them, we call them possessed. Um, and so I started to think, what does this word actually mean? So here we go. This is what it means. It means to seize or take control of or have control over another. What do you think about that? And have you learned to energetically feel into whether or not people are using control over you? Uh, can you even sense that it's control? Sometimes it's misinterpreted. I used to think when somebody was controlling that it, it came across to me as, oh, they really care about me. They're giving me lots of attention, for example. The narcissist knows how to do that extremely well. I used to fall for it every single time because my childhood was um, imbalanced and... Um, I was, I grew up with so much control. Can you tell the difference? Yeah. So what's, what's the lesson here? What would cause somebody to want to be giving their temple body or their, this is, this is the house, right? The body is the house. What would uh, bring somebody to the point of wanting to give this beautiful physical house over to an entity or over to a spirit for possession. Well, usually it's greed. Usually it's the desire to control another. And so we're matching energies again. Uh, usually it's the promise of lots of wealth. It's uh, usually the promise of lots of encounters with beautiful women, for example. These are the things that would have somebody want to sell their soul, for example. And so this house is given over and a deal is struck. But I want you to see it on the more subtle levels, uh, if you would. I know we speak about wealth building and manifesting here, so don't get me wrong. Wealth isn't the bad thing. It's the desire behind it. It's what you want to do with it. Do you know in order to hold great wealth that's gifted to you from spirit, universal joy energy, you actually have to give a lot you have to give a lot in order to get a lot. But the motivation will always be loving. It will never be how to manipulate and control. Can you feel the difference yet? And I know that it's subtleties because why would a person want to run in control anyway? Well, it's usually because they feel incredibly out of control. It's usually because they have low self-esteem or they have suffered really serious traumatic experiences that they haven't processed yet. It's usually the desire of, or feeling the need to be above somebody else. And so a lot of those types of personalities will jump into spiritual guruism or leadership or um, some type of authority figure. You see what I'm saying here? Uh, the one that has the desire to control another is usually out of control themselves. And when you're matching energies to energy, aren't entities completely and utterly out of control? They don't even have a body. They need yours. So if you're running in that control manipulation energy, you can have a little door or a window open in your temple body and you can have what I would call a walk-in. And that's not possession, but a walk-in can just for a moment use you to say something that's really controlling, really manipulative and have an agenda in order to manipulate somebody else. You've matched the energies. So what is a prized possession? Is it wrong to want possessions or is it the desire behind the uh, request for the possessions? What would you want the possessions for anyway? If it's 
coming from an ego-centered thing where you may be gifted a lot and then you need to sit back and ask yourself, who am I without that stuff? If you can comfortably say that you're still the same person, I think you're good. You're okay. You're not running in manipulation and control. We, we talk about things, you know, like worldly possessions. And worldly possessions can be a gift, universally speaking, in order that you can be a real blessing to others. That's where it's a great thing to have stuff. But if your identity and your ego is linked to the possessions because you don't feel full enough on the inside, uh, you don't feel loving enough, you don't feel loved enough, you feel the need to be noticed, you feel the need to be um, in control, <laughs> controls the key word for this conversation today, then I want you to analyze the operating system, which is three-dimensional. Uh, do you own anything or does anything own you? That's the question I'd like you to meditate on today. What owns you? What are you in contract to? Tract linking to the word blood, right? Yeah, there's a reason they use the word tract and con a reason there's the word con. So the contract, what's your soul contract? What are you tethered to? Is it possessions? Is it being possessive of another? Have any of you walked um, a very controlling relationship and ask yourself how that leaves you feeling? Does it leave you feeling full or does it leave you feeling empty? It's the exchanging of the energies in these relationships and that's where we need to be guarded and careful. When somebody's exhibiting control now, I can smell it like something's off in the fridge. I can't put words to it, but there's just this feeling in my belly, my intuition saying, just warning, warning, slow down, step back a bit. Observe as a witness without judgment and just test those feelings that you're feeling. Test the energies, test what that person's saying behind the schmoozy little comments because we all want to see the best in people but there are energies behind words you feel that right somebody can give you a compliment and yet behind the compliment can be this element of control maybe they want to schmooze you so that they can get something maybe they want to schmooze you because you make them look good there are all sorts of reasons that people use like clever little snaky words in order to control or manipulate you I wanted to mention these things, these energies of three-dimensional, four-dimensional, five-dimensional that you haven't maybe yet pondered. So here we go. Three-dimensional reality. We all have to walk this in order to quantum leap, but this is where you'll be struggling. You're stuck in a resonance of fear. Now, if you were fearful, you would want control, right? So control and fear, they're like twins. They're stuck together, those energies. There's no way of separating them other than stepping out of them. See, a fruit of the spirit is self-control. Self-control is the opposite to the desire to control another. To release and surrender is how you get to this self-control. It's trusting the higher process. It's trusting that all of this is happening around you for you, not because you're trying to hold on tightly. Try holding on to a rope as, um, say, a car is driving off with that rope. You'll get burnt. The, the harder you try to hold on, the more you're going to get burnt. So release, let go, surrender the control, and that's how you'll find this self-control, which is beautiful. It's actually an energy of trust, trusting the process. In the three-dimensional reality, you have the panic feeling as well. And that's another fear-based energy. It's another, if you're in a panic state, you want to hold on for control. So release and surrender panic today, which is the opposite to trusting, right? Trusting the process. You'll have energies like bullying. Now, a bully, as we know, is usually has been bullied, usually is in a state of fear, usually is in the desire to control. Control is the key word for this conversation. You'll have a place or a mindset of scarcity. So if you um, 
you know the schmoozers, right? That try and schmooze you so that they can look good by being with you or hanging off your apron string. Or, you know, by um, process of association, they get a promotion or whatever. I've seen this in the media industry for years now. I could always smell as an empath who was schmoozing me just to get something for themselves. Um, and that might sound harsh to you, but when you have the gift of discernment and intuition, it's very easy to smell a fake. But a lot of us get duped along the way but this is three-dimensional thinking so it's a trap actually you'll usually be stuck in anger or rage and this is where control comes from low self-esteem usually because you've suffered something that you haven't actually healed yourself from yet you need to release that in order to you feel out of control because you've suffered and therefore and it, it's much easier to try to control somebody else than look inward and surrender that control that's trapped you in that sticky energy. Um, you will be complaining if you're in three-dimensional thinking. Oh my gosh, look around us, please. We are trapped in this complaining toxic energy. You will not be trusting. It's mistrusting. You won't even trust yourself. So why would you trust another? You will be high emotions. You'll be up one minute, down the next. You'll be flowing, flooding around, not able to sit stably because you'll be influenced by whoever's holding the emotions within the room. And you'll have a huge desire for consumption. Can you see this in the advertising target? So to fill the void where either eating, shopping, sex addiction, where scrolling, 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 voyeuristically watching other people's lives, Kaiser says hi, uh, instead of living our lives to full abundance with the trust that everything that happens to us is divinely written. It's dog walk time. Uh, and so if you can trust the process enough to want to have the desire to jump out of three-dimensional thinking, you launch pad into four-dimensional thinking, which is this. Four-dimensional is hope. Yeah, that's a nice feeling. Like I haven't seen it in matter state yet, but I'm hopeful, which is a faith essence. It's a desire to want for better and I'm trusting the process collectively. It's reflection. So if somebody pisses me off, I might sit back and instead of blaming them, three-dimensional process, I might sit back and reflect and say, well, what are they showing me about myself? This is climbing the, the energetic ladder into a higher state of thinking. Uh, it's introspection. Everything that happens to me is universally written. You do not meet anybody without having to meet them. You must meet everyone you meet. Some of those people you meet might be for a hot moment or might be just for a smile on the street. Uh, a test, if you like, to see energetically the exchange. You will meet others that you'll have shorter transactions with and then you'll have others that you it's a lifelong soul contract and you're constantly learning and evolving with them. And that's beautiful, but you won't even recognize the difference until you get to four-dimensional thinking. Um, you will be releasing control when you get to four-dimensional thinking. I remember uh, angels whispering to me, okay, now you've passed the test and this is what I heard. Surrender all control, all manipulation. And, and it was shown to me in the astral realm that it had to happen two ways. So that doesn't just mean me. Uh, I surrender all control and manipulation, which means analyzing how I operate with others, analyzing my own internal thoughts on the subconscious level, which happen, whoa, so swiftly without you even realizing. And if you're interested, we just did a course yesterday with Design Her Collective. It was amazing on um, mind activation. And if you're interested in a recorded version of that with some notes, you can work through those things yourself, which will help you to jump and launch pad quantum leap into five dimensional thinking. But it's cutting off others as well. Having self-love boundaries and saying, you know what, this isn't feeling so great for me, so I'm, I still love you, but I'm going to put a little distance between us. And that doesn't even need to be said to the physical body. It can be done spirit to spirit. That's a really good tip that I can give you. You could, you could just visualize and send that person a telepathic little conversation and say, hey, the flesh is feeling really dense for me. I love you unconditionally, but until you match me for where my boundaries are, I'm just going to 
drift out for a little bit and this is self-love boundaries it's analyzing and relinquishing control because you're then not allowing control to be in your field so it works two ways that's what i was shown uh, and then you have uh self-motivation this is awesome because you're going to get healthier, you're going to get more mindful, you're going to activate um, discipline within your life that helps you lift your vibration, you're going to quantum leap into the next dimension, which feels incredible. Uh, you'll stop making excuses, you'll stop saying, uh, I won't exercise because I'm fearful of what other as others think, or I won't speak my truth because I'm worried about being judged. You're going to quantum leap into being a little more authentic, and that feels great. And then you'll also will get into what we might label conspiracy theories. Well, are they conspiracies? Most of them are true, but you'll be labeled. And so spirit will toughen your skin up in the four dimensional reality to test whether or not you're able or worthy to get to the next quantum leap, which is five dimensional thinking. Now, what is five dimensional? Well, get excited about this and replay it if you have to. Get a pen out, write it down. Five dimensional thinking is this. It's full on faith. No doubt in the house. I am, I know who I am, the great I am, and therefore I trust the process. And it's no longer waiting or asking or begging for something to happen. It's just knowing that it's going to drop in. And that feels so juicy licious. I can't wait for you all to get there and feel this existence. Um, it's focusing only in the now. You stop in five dimensional thinking about oh, what ifs in the past and, and uh, the what ifs in the future. You just relish the moment. You activate everything with love joy peace now and because you're holding that vibration it becomes you and guess what your tomorrow is better and better opportunities happen to you and better friendships come in and and opportunities drop in because you are so worthy because you're changing the vibration of earth by holding these energies you've become a portal or a vessel for spirit because spirit doesn't hold fear you think spirit wants to sit in your heart space with fear there i don't think so so you cannot share this dimensional body with possession or with joy. You've got to pick a team, basically. And then you step into the most incredible thing, and I alluded it to it just a second ago, but you become grateful to help others. Now, this is the acts of service that kick in, and you're not doing it because you want to be seen or you want to be uh, have a pat on the back. You're, you're doing it from a purely delicious uh, childlike heart space, knowing that you were three-dimensional thinking too once before, and then you jumped to four dimension and so many other souls helped you quantum leap and helped lift you up, helped feed you, helped give you opportunities in it. And they did it without any expectation, control or manipulation. And often a lot of them will say, pay it forward. Now, this is when you know you're working with this angelic essence energy and it feels delicious. And please know that you will never run out of money, finances, um, tangible goods when you give generously from the heart space without the desire to manipulate or control because matter's not even real. You, as The more you give, the more you're going to get back. And talk to those that are very wealthy operating in this heart space. They'll tell you that, that, that it feels so much better to give than to get because you are making someone's day, even more so when you do it secretly. So that's a five-dimensional state that I'm challenging all of you to launch pad into because it just feels so good to give to another that and make their day. You will adapt easily. You will launch into creativity. You won't feel stuck in five-dimensional thinking. And you will receive opportunities dropping in just because you're you just because you're plugged in to this higher love energy. I love this. I love this. So fear-based control manipulation, eviction notice. Don't match the energy of entities or demons. Clean up your house. Get into a higher state of thinking, which is the higher heart space, actually. We need to think from the heart. You know there are two sections to the heart, right? The heart 
and the higher heart. Well, the higher heart is this beautiful pink color. And this beautiful pink color is your new cloud, your new programming. So if you're interested in learning more, reach out and I will happily send you the link to purchase very reasonably. Oh, Rach is just putting it up tonight for our mind activation course that we ran yesterday. Or if you'd like to watch that for free, please join Design Her Collective um, for a minimal fee to join into this incredible community where all of these things are on offering. I love you and I hope this helps. Drop me a comment if you've ever met anyone that's possessed or if you've ever felt possessed by the desire to control another and how did you get to that? This is what we need to release. When we are exhibiting control on another, I'll reiterate, I am actually feeling out of control, which is fear-based. Love and fear, they can't mix in this beautiful heart space. Pick a team. I love you. Take care. It's my birthday today. I'm another year younger. I love you all. And thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you all for being here. Thank you so much. Um, chat soon. I love doing these lives. I love seeing who jumps in and it's really nice to see you all. Take care. Um, and hi to Marie Helene. It's really nice to see some of my beautiful friends from the media industry jumping in. Also a very artistic friend. Um, just giving you all a little wave here. Love, love, love. Keep following. If you would like to come to... Um, sound healing there's a lot happening this weekend we've got six sound healers playing at Warrywood. it's going to be the bomb.com uh, and uh, my friend Kristen doing a uh, big crystal grid please book in the last one was totally booked out it was insane we still have tickets if you want a ticket for that um didgeridoo and everything guys it's going to be amazing uh, drop me a message if you would like the ticketing for that and then of course soul sundays i have my smaller group at king's grove uh, for sound healing uh, wednesday night we have our opening for hq at good space all welcome five to seven if you'd like to come and celebrate with me please drop me a message for that what else is happening? Oh, and then Sunday afternoon, we have our Eco Lux Design Her Cleaning. We're going to teach you how to make cleaning products without toxic chemicals. Can't wait for that one. And that one will also be videoed if you're remote. Um, so yeah, stay in touch. Stay tuned. There's lots of action happening here. And I'm really excited to, to be birthing all these fun things. They're really creative and I'm meeting my people. It's just beautiful. I love you guys. Take care.